following the example of the Archbishop of Canterbury, I'm in the kitchen at Bishop's house with my wife, Heather. We're very grateful to Jim Cook from Lancaster, who's been recording and then producing these streamed services and messages. Up till now, the Sunday at nine o'clock streams have been services of the word, in which we've offered our praise to God in music, read the scriptures, fed on that word, declared our faith in God, his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and brought our intercession to him. For many, the lockdown and our inability to gather and meet together has been a major challenge. Isolating ourselves has been an unnatural but necessary step to restrict the spread of the pandemic, protect the NHS and save lives. Being unable to access our buildings has made us focus our discipleship more on our homes. But that has meant we've been unable to obey some of Jesus' commands, and particularly, do this in remembrance of me. So today, we will share in the familiar liturgy of the Eucharist, though it cannot be the kind of Holy Communion that Jesus intended. Only Heather and I will be able to receive the bread and wine. But in observing and listening, you are encouraged to receive all the benefits of Christ's passion as you feed on him in your hearts, by faith and with thanksgiving. In order for the liturgy to make sense, when you will not be receiving the bread and the wine, you'll notice a few adjustments are inevitably made to the wording of the service. May the sacramental signs of broken bread and wine are poured point us to that one full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction that Jesus made when he died on Calvary. We remember in this service, he is offering of himself for the salvation of the world, proclaiming his death until he comes again. And in response, we offer ourselves as living sacrifices for his service. So, at this time of fear and anxiety for many in our country, we proclaim our Christian hope that Jesus has defeated death and opened the gate of glory. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is He's risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Alleluia. Our opening hymn acknowledges the pain of a fallen world, praise for the light of the risen Christ, to break into the darkness, and in the refrain speaks of the church gathered today, which of course we cannot do in the usual way, but which nonetheless is true spiritually as we continue to be the body of Christ in our temporary dispersion. We sing together, longing for light.
His light to shine in the darkness, we join together and pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. And so we pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought word and deed we have not loved you with our whole heart we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves in your mercy forgive what we have been help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly love mercy and walk humbly with you our god amen Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in your goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so we respond to that promise of God's forgiveness in joining together in the words of the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer for you alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with the holy spirit in the glory of god the father amen and i'll lead us now in the collect for today the fourth sunday after easter risen christ Faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, so that all your people may be gathered into one flock, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We now listen to the reading of God's Word. The first reading is taken from Acts chapter 2 verses 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching 
and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as he had, had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our second reading is taken from John chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. When he brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they'll run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you o, o Christ. Let us pray. Father, may your word be our rule, your spirit our teacher, and your greater glory our supreme concern, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, I'm not quite sure, and someone will be bound to tell me, why one of the required readings for today tells the story of the early church after the gift of the Spirit. And that's before we celebrated the giving of that spirit at Pentecost at the end of the month of May. Well, be that as it may, it is, however, a very appropriate reading in a strange way, because it describes those first Christians as gathering and meeting daily, the very thing that we have not been able to do for a number of weeks. What a reminder that is for us of our normal freedoms, and also of the experience of our persecuted brothers and sisters in other parts of the world who can't meet or have to meet in secret, accessing teaching and services via the internet or the radio. In this lockdown time, we've experienced something of their normal, which should prompt our praying and our giving to support them in their courageous faithfulness in what is a long-term lockdown for them. But to begin with, it was not like that for the first Christians after Pentecost. They were a changed group of men and women having been frightened and disillusioned, they became confident, outgoing, and fearless, and all because of the gift of the Holy Spirit. He was the one that made all the difference, and will do so today where he is allowed to work. Those first followers of Jesus in Acts 2 became really committed 
and wholehearted. We read in Acts chapter 2, they were devoted. They devoted themselves. There was no half-heartedness, no half-measures. They would have been strong advocates for our diocesan vision's emphasis on making disciples, being witnesses, and growing leaders. That's all about encouraging a deeper commitment to Jesus Christ and his cause. But what was it in practice that they were committed to? Well, the writer of Acts tells us. First, they were committed to the apostles' teaching. They were hungry to learn and to grow in their faith. In those days, the teaching of the eyewitnesses of Jesus' ministry was the way they grew in their understanding and their knowledge of what God had been doing before it got written down. For us, the apostles' teaching is found in the scriptures that inspired revelation, saying who God is, what he's done, and what he requires. And therefore the scriptures are read at all our public services and should be read by us as Christians in the privacy of our own homes. That's why we've had something last year of a campaign entitled Knowing the Scriptures Better as a way of encouraging people to read the Bible on their own, in their own homes, and on a daily basis. These booklets were designed to help that process, and it's not too late to start if that's something that you would find helpful. I'm often reminded of those words used in the coronation of the Queen all those years ago when she was given a Bible and was told that the Bible was the most valuable thing this world affords. Secondly, those first disciples were committed to the fellowship. They were just committed to one another as they were committed to Jesus. They were brothers and sisters in the faith, the family of believers. And so we read in our reading from Acts, they shared with one another, they cared for each other, and they met regularly with one another. Their strong bonds of commitment expressed their obedience to Jesus' command that as his disciples, they were to love one another. Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you, love one another as I have loved you. That's what the grace prayer calls the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And in this time of lockdown, Christians need to work in new ways of being that family of Jesus' disciples, supporting, caring, and sharing with one another, which then, of course, spills out into our caring for all, as we love our neighbours as ourselves. Thirdly, they were committed to the breaking of bread. Well, here's a phrase that describes an activity that's become a way of identifying that Christian community. In those days, you read, when they shared a meal in their homes and broke bread to share it with one another, in the breaking of the bread, they would remember Jesus and his broken body on the cross. It was a simple act of remembrance of Jesus saving death, ensuring that until he comes again, that death is not forgotten, but proclaimed again and again. And that's why Jesus commanded those first disciples, do this in remembrance of me. And so Christians have received broken bread and wine outpoured and fed on him in their hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Well, 2,000 years later, we've developed uh, different ways of doing this when we meet together so that what God has done for us in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, is something which is kept at the heart of our faith. The breaking of bread is God's gift and offer to us a visible and tangible sign of his love, calling us to offer ourselves in response as living sacrifices. Today, we cannot share fully in a holy communion, and I feel awkward that you are denied access to this gift from God, but trust that as you observe and listen to the familiar truths of the gospel, your heart 
will be strangely warmed as we're reminded that by faith Christ is in us, the hope of glory. And then one other, they were committed to the prayers. More briefly, but no less important, we must note their commitment to prayer, relating to the risen Jesus in praise, confession, and intercession, and to do so privately and also corporately. It's been very good to hear of Zoom prayer gatherings around the diocese, praying for an end to this crisis and pandemic, praying for those who are dying, praying for the bereaved, praying for the staff who are caring for the risk at the sick, at the risk of their own lives, and in it all, praying for this moment, which reminds us of our mortality and weakness and powerlessness, that we may turn to God and find in him our peace and our hope, whatever the circumstances may be. The more time that we give to prayer, the greater importance we attribute to its effectiveness. So those first disciples were devoted and committed to these four things, four gifts from God to his people, the scriptures, fellowship, the breaking of bread and prayer, all designed to keep them going, to make them strong and healthy, and for us likewise today, that we may indeed be a healthy church that transforms the wider community. As I close, there are four consequences to uh, that commitment and devotion. That all the people we read were in awe of what was going on. There were answers to prayer, miracles took place. They had favour in the eyes of all the people. And people were becoming Christians on a daily basis. May we, in this lockdown phase, continue to be the church of Jesus Christ while we are apart and find ways to welcome others to receive his gift of the fullness of life. Amen. In our service, now we will be led in our intercessions by Sam Cheeseman and his family. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the ability to share in this service with Christians across the diocese. Thank you that as we meditate on your word, come before you in prayer and remember your holy sacrifice. We do so surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses and joined by your spirit to those who we long to see in our places of worship in the future. We pray particularly for our leaders asking for men and women who profess you to be Lord, to stand up as leaders in our country and our world today. We pray against fear or self-seeking in decision-making and ask that those who govern over us will seek first the kingdom of God in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the church all around the world at this tough time. Give them your hope and joy. Bless our family and friends. Bless those who are lonely. And we will have a moment of silence to tell you each name that comes into our heads. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our yeah. prayer. And Heavenly Father, we bring before you our linked diocese in the Free State in South Africa and as Bishop Dintway. In this time of lockdown there as well, when the pressures on the poor are so great, we remember those who live in the townships, who are making uh, decisions about who can eat and who goes without. We pray for the charities and the individuals who work with them and ask that they will know your peace and abundant blessings at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We remember too our own communities who are struggling at this time. We know that families in areas of economic deprivation and families from BME backgrounds 
are disproportionately affected and we dedicate them into your loving hands. May we and all those who make decisions over your people seek your will in all things. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dear God, help us to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Teach us how to keep your day. Lead and bless us on our way. Christ within our hearts and minds, his care and love forever bind. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And bringing our prayers to a close, we say together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Sam, for those prayers. We now will share in the peace, although we are not together. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Following the gospel reading about Jesus as the gate and the shepherd of his people, we respond by singing that we will trust in him alone, the Lord's my shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you alone. And I will trust in you alone. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will guides my ways in righteousness, and he anoints my head with oil, and my cup it overflows with joy, I feast on his pure delights, and I will Your endless love. 
is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. Who by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation Sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed the source of all holiness, granted by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and service. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So we join with Christians down through the centuries and all around the world in praying the prayer Jesus taught, 
his first disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So in our separate locations, we draw near with faith. We remember and give thanks that Christ died for us, and we feed on him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. As Heather and I receive bread and wine, so the words of the song, Jesus be the centre, will come on the screen and encourage each one of us to allow him to be at the heart of who we are and of what we think and do. Jesus, be the centre, be
Let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son Jesus Christ to be the Good Shepherd and in his love for us to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection and give us grace to follow in his steps through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his Son. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with each one of you, those you love, and those for whom you pray, this day and for always. Amen. So we go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. <laughs>